practice in the middle go a bit of a mind We spent quite a long time discussing before we put anything down. And we identified some main areas as in subject knowledge, understanding of how learning actually happens, <coughs> reflection. I know this is quite obvious, but to be interested in the actual subject that you are teaching. Adaptability. I that one, Values. Values. Sorry, that's why. Philosophy. Underlying philosophy, and we also thought that emotional intelligence is quite important. And we then identified some sub areas. So, for example, emotional <coughs> intelligence also ties in with respect respect for the student, but also respect for ourselves and respect from the student towards us as the lecturer, which is basically somewhat connected to subject knowledge. Again, if I don't know what I'm talking about, it will be very difficult for my students to respect me because they will find that out immediately the second I open my mouth. Enthusiasm for the subject would kind of ties in with interest, but there's, in, at least in my point of view, a slight difference between being interested in something and also being enthusiastic about it. I myself, for example, am interested in many things. I'm not enthusiastic about them. I, I wouldn't want to share it. Some things I just want to acquire for myself. But if I'm enthusiastic, I can actually share it. And the more enthusiastic I am, at least in, in my field in conference interpreting and languages, the easier my students learn. Be a good model of a learner. So basically, if I find it difficult to acquire new knowledge, how can I teach my students to acquire new knowledge? We actually need to want to teach, um, not just gain knowledge for ourselves, but actually want to be able to give other people that understanding. Um, sorry, am I supposed to finish the whole thing? Does anybody else in my group want to carry on, or I can carry on if you want to? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, uh, does anyone else want? Because mm -hmm. I, I demonstrated Blackboard last week, okay. which is... Uh, I'll just carry on then. <laughs> <laughs> we also put down an understanding of our learners, which ties in with emotional intelligence. Um, is something we touched on briefly before, understanding how my students learn and adapting to that. There's no point in trying to force somebody to learn the way I learn if they can't learn in that way. So I need to, as a lecturer, actually spend some time trying to figure out how can I make you understand something. Um, accepting to be challenged. I think that obviously kind of depends on what you teach. But again, if I base it, for example, on my subject, um, the students start out being quite weak and they have a very, very it's a steep learning curve and some of them then actually supersede us and I think for some people and for some subjects it might actually be very difficult to accept that a student can with the comparatively little package I offer them maybe do as much as I can or a lot more than I can and maybe even in a shorter time and I think if I enter teaching without being willing to accept that somebody can do better than me, faster and with less effort, then I don't think I should really be teaching because that means I don't actually want to share what I have with you. Um, reflection and being prepared to adapt or change. If what I'm doing is not working, it's me who needs to change because I'm in the front of the classroom. Um, the student has to change in a way, but seeing as I'm the lecturer, it's me who's in control, it's me who's the model, so it's me who has to either adapt and change myself or change my methods. I think that's it, isn't it? I can't read the yellow one. I think it's evaluation and feedback. So obviously evaluate the students' work, and but also evaluate what I do. Um, I think that was about setting sort of yeah. learning outcomes and then measuring students' progress yeah. towards... Yeah. Okay.